Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be continuing with the eigenmodes and eigenfrequencies, but this time we are not doing a derivation, we're doing an example. So let's jump right in. We have a double pendulum right there. Let me switch colors. So we have a double pendulum. And these are the linearized equations of motion. Now we still have those variables and so we add some numbers to them. So we have now the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix with some numbers so we can work with that. So now we want to do the things that we saw in the last video and that is first get the eigenfrequencies. To get the eigenfrequencies, we have to set the determinant of this equation to zero. So, sorry, for this matrix to zero. So we have this matrix. Oh, that was wrong. We have this matrix that where we had basically uh, 10, 1, 10, 0, 0, 1 minus omega squared and 20, 2, 2, 1. That is a 1. So we had this matrix that is here and we set the determinant to zero. We get this characteristic polynomial and we find two solutions. That is one omega one squared is 0 0.4336 and omega two squared is 1.4414. So these are our eigenfrequencies squared. Now we have to get the eigenmodes. And to get the eigenmodes, we have this equation. We insert the eigenfrequencies that we found before and can determine our XR, so our eigen shape. But the thing is that this matrix is linearly dependent on its, uh, the rows of this matrix are linearly dependent because it has a determinant that is equal to zero. So we can't fully define our X. This is why we set our first value basically to zero. We have to do some input because it's not completely defined. So if we have this X and we have this matrix, so let's write it down. We have 10 minus omega one squared 20 mean minus two omega squared minus two omega squared one minus omega squared like this and then we have our one and x. So we multiply this one with this one, we get this. Then we multiply our x with that, that is here, and we're supposed to get a zero and zero. So this is how we can now determine our xr. So we just restructure these terms and we get our terms for each xr. Now we have to input our omegas, our eigenfrequencies that we found before, and we find our missing terms in our eigen uh, shapes. So the first eigen shape is 1.453, and the second one is minus 6.53. So can we visualize it? Well, in the example of a double pendulum that we had here, we can actually visualize it. So the first eigen shape looks something like this. So we have one unit in this direction and then we have one and a half units basically in this direction. We, we're working with absolute angles. For the second eigen mode, we have one unit again in this direction and minus six units in the other directions. So these are the two eigen shapes of our pendulum. So you see that there's not very much to it. As soon as you know what to do, let me mark the important equations. As soon as you know what to do, it's this part here, get the eigenfrequencies, then insert them right here. Don't forget to set one unit or one of those values to one or any other uh, uh, value and you will get the eigen shapes. And this is all there is to it. Now you have the eigenmodes, these one, eigenmodes, 
and eigenfrequencies that we had right here. I hope this video gave you a clearer understanding on how to work with those eigenmodes and eigenfrequencies. There is not much to it. It's really, really simple math. As soon as you understand what you need to do, all exercises are very, very simple. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any, que if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time.